our presenters today are from Teledyne Storm, um, Rob Nichols, who is an engineering manager for the uh, multi-channel harness group, and Matt Gow, who will actually be speaking. Matt is a senior apps engineer for Teledyne Storm as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Matt, and um, there you go. All right, so understanding Vita 67, its configurations, compatibility, and performance. Um, this is brought to you by Teleline Storm, by Rob Nichols and Matt Gao. So a uh, quick rundown, we got overview, we have Vita 67.1, Vita 67.2, the difference between the direct attach and plug-in module, the OSSM interface, two types of contacts, type A and B, Vita 67.3, the manufacturer defined layouts in 67.3, the nano, available cable types, the recommended installation and removal tools, followed by a quick recap. Vita 67 is a specification covering multi-channel coax connectors. Components are defined and are intended to connect cards to backplanes. Vita operating frequencies go to 26 and a half gigahertz. Um, there are cases where higher frequencies can be met. Connectors are sized to fit standard slot sizes and line up to standard reference plane locations. Standardization allows various connections defined by the open VPX standard to work together. Um, this allows high frequency frequency coax connections, wafer type card connections, and fiber optic connections all on the same board. Uh, this, is, this image is a good representation of the Vita 67.1.2 size and reference to the penny, um, the types of blocks and contacts used. We have the four position and the eight position, so the dot one and dot two. Um, the two types of contacts, direct attach, block, shown. Vita 67 is composed of four parts. Vita 67.0 is the base standard, defines the terms, requirements, qualification, and tomatability. Um, Vita 67.1 is the four position SMPM. Vita 67.2 is the eight position SMPM, and the DAT3, which allows manufacturers to find layouts and connectors. Going from left to right on the image, we have the DAT1, DAT2, DAT3, and the last one is the Nano. Vita 67.1, four position, um, the DAT1 defines the 3U connectors contain four SMPM connections. 3U refers to the size of the connector block and is the standardized slot size covered by the related Vita 46 standard. Spring-loaded contact is located on the plug-in module and it has multiple options available for the back plane, the direct attach module and the plug-in adapter. Here we have an example of how the Vita 67.1 mates as a harness. Um, you can notice the spring-loaded contact on the plug-in module and the backplane using the direct attach module with the snap-in contacts. Similar to Vita 67.1, we have the Vita 67.2 8 position. Um, the DOT2 defines the 6U connectors containing 8 SMPM connections. Standardized slot size covered by the standard Vita 46. Spring-loaded contacts located on the plug-in module, similar to the Vita 67.1. And just like in DOT1, multiple options for the back plane, direct attach and the plug-in adapter. Visual representation of the eight position mating format. 
Um, spring Lowy Contact, again, is on the plug-in side. This one, again, using the direct attach module on the back plane. Very similar to the dot one, just a big version with eight positions. The difference between direct attach and plug in and adapter. There are two types, two styles of the mail connector blocks to find, direct attach and plug in. On the direct attach, the cable contact is held in the connector block. On the plug in st style, the mail bullet is built into the connector block. Um, Vita 67.1 and dot two, the component is located on the back plane. With the dot three, this is flipped, and it will be discussed further in the presentation. Um, the direct attach in the image above uses the plug-in contact, where the plug-in uses an additional cable plus the bullet adapter. So we do recommend using the attach style, direct attach style, offers superior electrical performance as there are fewer interconnects, mechanical performance since contacts are held in the connector block, which can offer lower costs since there are fewer components. Uh, Plug-in allows in any SMP cable to be plugged in. We do support both options. Um, any type of SMP can be plugged in. Now we get to the OSSM style plug-in adapter, which is defined in the SMPM interface and SMPM to OSS app. There are a few issues pertaining to this option. Um, one being the wrench clearance. You can see in the image, it is very tight to fit a wrench in the inside channels. Uh, if you're torquing down the coupling knot, it's gonna cause some issues using that wrench. You have an added interconnect, the OSSM is an uncommon interface. Um, and because of this, we believe there is very to no, very little to no usage for this type of adapter, which we are removing from our website and it will be special request only. The B to 67.1.2 has two contact retentions, type A and a type B. And we're calling this T versus the world. Uh, the Type 8 has a contact retained by spring clip. This design has been used for many years to retain Panama connectors, and most manufacturers, including Storm, use this system. Type B uses a washer with a slot to retain contacts. Uh, currently, as we know, T is the only one to use this. It's, it, does, it is a little slight, slightly harder to assemble. Um, I could use this system, makes the patent claims on the design. Likely nobody is going to challenge them on this. We have built and used both of these contacts. So depending on what your uh, layout calls out for, we can use both. Speed of 67.3, which Rob will take over the present. So the V67.3 spec um, is a, for a few changes into the spec, and there's a number of things that the designer needs to be aware of when they're specifying these parts. Uh, most obvious is that the V67.3 moved the spring loaded contact onto the back plane side. That's not particularly difficult for the designer to understand and deal with. Um, it allows for some different connections on the uh, back plane. But the other things that Vita 67.3 permitted is it allows for manufactured defined contact layouts as well as other interfaces in addition to the SMPM interface. They have same, similar options with the direct attach module and the plug-in adapter, um, but the various interfaces which are manufactured defined 
uh, is very challenging for the designer because they may inadvertently design in a manufacturer-specific layout, or they may have flowed down to them a VITA 67.3 compliance requirement on a spec, but that requirement alone does not definitively define the contact layout. So this is a layout uh, very similar to 67.1, 67.2, but you see that the spring-loaded contact has been moved to the back plane side. Another important thing to notice is that since the manufacturer defines the contact layouts, there are some layouts where the lower contact actually will interfere with the board unless the board is notched. These are some things that are not necessarily obvious to the designer initially, and we want people to be aware of this so they don't run into a problem as they specify and design these into their system. So here we have a comparison. Above is a 67.1, 67.2. You can see it's identified the spring-loaded side is on the plug-in module. And the 67.3, which has the spring-loaded side, moved to the back panel. Contacts are intermediable, compatible between 67.1 and 67.2. They both, both of those specs use the same contacts. Where 67.3 contacts are unique to 67.3. These will, 67.3 contacts will not fit into 67.1, 67.2 blocks. Here again, we see the differences between these two. 67.1 and 67.2 are available exclusively with the SMPM contact interface. 67.3 allows the SMPM interface, but it also allows manufactured defined interfaces. The Nano and SMPS are smaller interfaces that have been introduced into the marketplace. Allowing the manufacturer to define the contact layout gives essentially an infinite range of possibilities of contact layouts, um, and an infinite potential for designers to <laughs> fall into some traps, um, because it means you, the designer has to be very careful that the layout is defined because different manufacturers' part numbers, parts are not automatically interchangeable in the way they are with 67.1 and 67.2. And designers also have to be careful. You can see this example is a part which is in the marketplace where the low row contacts actually would interfere with the um, printed circuit board if the circuit board was not notched out. Now, another interesting thing about 67.3 is it allows for other interfaces and manufacturers have responded with the nano, among others, um, which gives a much higher density. The nano contact can only handle an 047 diameter cable. It's too small to take an 086 cable. The half-size module can support up to 12 contacts. The full-size module can support up to 18 contacts. It's a very high-density package. Um, which brings some benefits to it. This is a size comparison between the nano contact and the SMPM contact. You can see that the nano contact is approximately half the diameter of the SMPM, uh, which naturally gives, uh, lets us have a denser package, but also restricts the cable size that can be utilized. Now, Vita 67.1 and .2 define parts with 047 and 086 nominal cable sizes. So 
Storm has some specific cable offerings that are very useful when used in 67B to 67 applications. We have our Storm Flex cables, which are probably um, industry leading in their strength, very durable. And we also have a 096 diameter cable, which can be used, uh, which is a very phase temperature stable. We also offer a wide range of SMA, SMP, SMPM, and other connectors to go on the other end of any VITA cable assemblies that you may be developing. So I'd like to touch on the fact that removal and assembly tools are needed with VITA um, parts. The assembly tool is not mandatory, but it is a fingernail saver, which might cause your installers to be less likely to use needle nose pliers and damage the cables. So we, we do recommend that if you're going to be putting them in and out of blocks. Removal of the contacts is, it is necessary to use a removal tool. Um, <laughs> when the removal tool is not available, the hammer and small screwdriver method is often employed, which does void the warranty and usually results in a damaged cable. So it's important to consider if you intend to remove any of the cables for service or replacement, uh, that somewhere in your facility you keep a removal tool handy. So to recap, VIA 67 is a specification covering multi-channel coaxial connectors. Components are intended to connect cards to backplanes. They're under the umbrella of the Open VPX standards. 67.1 is a four channel 3U connector. 67.2 is an eight channel 6U connector. The SMPM interface is the same on 67.1 and 67.2. But there are two types of retention in the marketplace, type A and type B. And a type A will not mate in a type B block and a type B will not mate in a type A block. But once they're installed in their, in their appropriate blocks, the blocks in the context can be intermated freely. Vita 67 is where things really get interesting. Most obvious is that it moves the spring-loaded contact to the backplane side. It allows for multiple interfaces, some of which are smaller and allow for a denser package. And Vita 67 allows contact layout to be at manufacturer's discretion. So many non-standard layouts are possible, which is something that the designer needs to be aware of as they specify these parts. So I hope we've provided you with some useful information and a little bit of understanding of some of the details of the Vita 67 parts and specs. And at this point, if there are any questions, we would uh, be more than happy to try to answer them and learn about some of your applications and experience with the, with the spec as well.